I made it. I'm still here. I don't know if that's your testimony, but it truly is my testimony. I made it through some difficult times and through some uphill battles and through some awful situations. I made it. I'm still here. These men are singing to the glory and honor to God this morning. Sounds like they know a little something about making it. Somebody made it out of some stuff that killed some other folks, so I, I made it, made it, made it, made it. Good morning, First African Baptist Church. I bless God for the opportunity to stand here under your hearing this morning. I do not take it for granted, this opportunity that has been given me. I'm humbled that our pastor would ask that I would stand in his stead this morning to break the bread of life with and for you all. If you could turn over into that scripture in Romans that was read in your hearing, Romans the eighth chapter, the 28th verse. Romans the eighth chapter, the 28th verse. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. You may take your seat. If I were to bring forth a title this morning, it would be then work it out then work it out let us pray God in Jesus name in the moments that you have supplied for me to bring to the ears of your people a little piece of your word God open their ears hearts and minds that they can hear what you have given to this your servant Hide me behind the old rugged cross this morning, God, that they could see all of you and less of me. Today, God, I pray someone might come running, wanting to know what must I do to be saved. It's about you, God, not about us. What must I do to be saved in this time and in this space? Allow us to worship in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus, the Christ, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. All things work together for our good. How many of us question that sometimes? All things are working together for our good. How many of us would have cause to pause when someone reminds us of this particular scripture? Maybe things have always been extremely wonderful in your life. That's not my testimony. Maybe you've never had an opportunity to question the words of this particular scripture. So let me give you a couple scenarios. A healthy young girl, age seven, falls unconscious at school. By the time she gets to the hospital, she's dead. A teen boy, star player on the football team, runs the winning touchdown and falls dead in the end zone. You answered your call to ministry. Your family is ecstatic. Your husband and your or your wife is completely in this with you. You're almost done with seminary and she or he leaves you and takes all your kids. Your daughter and her husband are awaiting the arrival of your firstborn grandchild. They haven't asked the sex because they want to be surprised. At seven months, something goes terribly wrong. Your daughter is rushed to the hospital where the baby is delivered and despite all efforts, 
that beautiful baby boy dies. Do all things really work together for good? Do they? Can we still believe Romans 8 and 28? Let's be honest. You can lie to me, but be honest with yourself. There are some times that we find a few problems with the words from Apostle Paul. See, they promise something that we, as humans, have trouble believing. The text said, and we know that all things work together for good. We would say to Paul, how can you be so sure of that? Most of us are not as sure as Paul. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself. There are times when things are working and I can't find the good in them. We hope that all things are working together for good. We want to believe they do, but do we truly know this word to be true? All things include things that we think ought to be left out. When Paul says all things, that seems a little too definite for us. All things? Really, Paul? All things. We might go as far to say some things work together. But do we really believe in all things? We understand that out of great difficulty, we learn great lessons of our faith that possibly can't come any other way. Some things clearly work together for good, but how do we begin to believe all things are working together for our good? Thanks for asking. Romans 8.28, in theory, is one of the most beloved scriptures in our ancient text. People quote it, write it, exegete it, and expound upon it frequently. They tell it to you when they come to the hospital to see you. When somebody dies, they tell you all things work together for good. Christians love this verse. We just love it. Many of us have memorized it since children in Sunday school and VBS. Many of us have used it in our own lives when we were sick, when we lost loved ones, when we were crushed by the magnitude of issues in our lives. We dug into the crevices of our memory and quoted it with much assurance. All things work together for good. We dug deep, but we still doubted. Wow. Did I say that out loud? We prayed, we cried, yelled, fasted, tarried, rolled around on the floor, called everybody we knew who knew how to pray. And we still doubted. Some really hard things have happened in our lives. Then in walks your great Christian friend who says all oh, things work together for good. I don't want to hear that right now. This must be a cruel joke. I don't want to hear that. I have cancer. I'm sick. My child died. My husband left. My house is being foreclosed. My kid attempted suicide. I lost my job and I'm losing my mind and you tell me all Things are working together for good. All things can't be that good. Explain it to me, but whether we like it or not, it's in our ancient text. Apostle Paul wrote it, so it must mean that it means something to us. Can we still truly believe that God will work it out for our good? What should we consider as to help us to walk this daily life when things don't seem so good? Well, today, I'm going to give you four considerations and get out of your way. Okay? First, we have to start with God. 
it all comes back to God. King James reminds us that it works for those who love God. In the NIV, it says, in all things, God works. It all comes back to God. The proper emphasis is not on what we do. The emphasis has to be on what God does. We will never properly understand this verse as long as we put God at the end and not at the beginning. This is not a roll of the dice. We don't just believe God just arbitrarily shows up. God isn't taken by surprise by anything that happens in our life. God already knows what's going to happen. God is there in the beginning, the middle, and the end. God is always right there. He already knows. He was there when you were made. He was there before you were made. He was there before the beginning of time. We just have to put our absolute faith and trust in God. And then we remember God is not shaken by our own lack of faith. God just wants to build our faith. I hear all the time, all you need is a mustard seed faith. That's true, but that's not all it takes. You can make it through on mustard seed faith, but can you be sustained on mustard seed faith? Can mustard seed faith get you through the loss of your child? Can mustard seed faith get you off the corner when you want to pay your bills and you were used to making $10,000 a week and now you make seven fifty dollars an hour? Can mustard seed faith bring you through chemo, radiation, and surgery? As I like to say, honey bunches of nope. You can't make it through difficult times without grounding in your faith. Mustard seed faith can get you through a hangnail, but can it get you through your child hanging themselves? You've got to grow up in this faith. God is truly at work in all things. There is no such thing as luck. God is at work in your life. The answer to everything in Romans 8.28 is God. He was there before all of this came to pass, no matter what happens. God is still there. When we look at these situations, we must not think that we can cheaply explain away difficult stuff. Stop telling people it will get better. The most insensitive thing we can do is when people have difficult stuff happening in their lives to tell them it will get better. All things work together for good. Where is your faith? Really? Have we become so theologically dysfunctional that we are theoretically unsound? When did we become such a spiritual people that we forget that we are human? as well. Tell me how good things are when your mama dies. Tell me how good things are when you get the cancer diagnosis and are told you only have 30% chances to survive. Tell me how you feel when your child attempts suicide. Let's get real, people, and build one another up, one person at a time, so that we can figure out what this all things working together means. Stop pretending like you're already there. We have a way of being so churchy nowadays. We know what to say. We know how to say it. I'm blessed and highly favored. We know how to walk around here like we got our all our stuff together. But at the midnight hour, we're on our face screaming and crying, Lord, save me. Stop lying to yourself. This is the hospital where sick people get well. And if everybody pretends like they're well, what are we really doing? What will you say when your child dies? What will you say when your marriage is falling apart? What will you say when your house 
is taken from underneath you. The Bible never told us to pretend that pain isn't pain. The point is we have to see God's involvement in all things. God is actively working in our lives. We have to point to God, not how pious we think we are. God is the reason. If we don't look to God, we're lost. Paul isn't saying because bad things happen, that's good. Paul isn't saying that suffering and tragedy is good. Paul isn't saying just faith it and everything will be perfectly all right. What Paul is saying is this. See God in it all, and in turn, God will make everything just the way it's supposed to be. What Paul is saying is be still, be quiet, and know that God is at work. We aren't always sure about what God is doing, but we know God is. We always know we can trust God's heart even when we can't see God's hand. Next, we have to wrap our minds around how all things can work together for good because we have to have long-term perspective. See, so many things in this life seem to be unexplainable. Why would a storm come in and destroy all the homes on a block but two? Why does one sibling excel while the other struggles? Why does cancer come back when the doctor says they got it all? The list of these things can be endless. In isolation, they make no sense at all. If there is a purpose behind tragedy, I can't see it. We tend to judge what we cannot see in it all. We judge the end by the beginning. We cannot judge what is going to happen by what has already happened. We have to trust the process. We have to trust the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Lori to do exactly what God says he will do. Paul was prolific in writing work together here in this text. The phrase work together really in the Greek is one word, synergion. We get our English word synergy from it. What is synergy? It's what happens when you put two or more elements together to form something brand new that could not have been formed separately. Synergy is the combination of many separate elements to produce a positive result. That's what Paul means when he says that things may not make sense in isolation, but in fact, they are working together to produce something good in our lives. There's a divine sort of synergy in our darkest moments. This synergy produces something new and positive. The good that is ultimately produced could not happen any other way. Want to know how? Let's talk about it. Yes, you had a heart attack, but now you're in the gym, you're eating right, and you're more healthy than you've ever been. Yes, your diabetes was out of control, but you put down the sugar, the bread, and the starches, and now you're monitoring and taking better care of your health and that of your family. Yes, your loved one died, but now you're better aware of the strength that God has poured into you and that resides within you. Yes, you had problems in your marriage, but you went to counseling and now your marriage is better than it ever been. Yes, you lost your job, but you found your passion. Yes, your house was foreclosed upon, but now you're taking better care of your finances and you're living to next door to the person that God has called you to lead to Christ. From the outside, everything looks dim and dreary. However, God is working it out on the inside. 
distracted. You can hear the noise and feel the pressure of the press, but you can't see what God is doing. The new person you will become, the new relationship you will have, the new ability you will gain, you might not see at the beginning of your difficulty. You have to hold on to see exactly what God is doing. Don't give up five minutes before the miracle happens. God is always up to something in our lives. Paul is saying our experiences are like this. God begins with raw materials of our life, including some parts that we think serve no good purpose. Those materials are acted upon by pressure, heat, and fire, bent, molded, shaped, and joined together. Over time, something beautiful is created. Remember, gold without fire is never pure gold. There is a blessing in this pressing the pressure and heat make diamonds shine more brilliantly. The pressing that God does upon us makes us shine more brilliantly if we don't give up. This is God's divine design in our lives. Nothing is wasted in this process. Can we still believe in Romans 8? 28. Yes, we can, but we must have long-term perspective. Third, we must define the word good. What is good? What is Paul talking about when he says good? See, for most of us, good means we have health, happiness, money, relationships, food, shelter, long life, careers, friends, family. In general, we think good life is a better set of circumstances. That isn't necessarily what God is trying to show us. If we peruse down into that next verse in Romans, God defines for us what he really means. For those who God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. That makes it very clear. God has predestined you and I to a certain end. That end is the good of Romans 8, 28. It is that we might be conformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ. That is the good in all of us. God is at work in our life because he's making us more like Christ. God has predestined you to that end. God is working in your life making that happen. Anything that happens in your life that makes you more like Jesus Christ is innately good. When Paul says all things work together for good, he's not saying that tragedies and heartaches of life will always produce a better set of circumstances. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But God is not committed to making you just happy and successful. God is committed to making you more like his son, Jesus the Christ. My hope is built on Jesus. Whatever it takes to make you more like Christ, even if it hurts, is good. Our good and God's good aren't always the absolute same. We want happiness and fulfillment, peace and long life. Meanwhile, God is over here working in and through us and by everything that happens to us, trying to transform us into the image of his son. What is our good? Are you more like Christ because of the things that have happened to you? Or are you just plain bitter. 
Has your testimony been written? Has your life been an example for someone else? Are you just sitting in the corner licking your wounds or are you using your experiences to help somebody else get through? Can God depend on you to let someone else know that they can make it out of their situations? Does that include the worst things that have happened to us? Yes. Does that include the things that have deeply hurt us? Yes. Does that include the times when we were heartbroken? Yes. Does that include the times when we have sinned? Yes. We don't talk about sin too much anymore, but we must do so. Does that include times when we doubt God? Yes, does that even include times where we might have cursed God? Yes. We are not so super saved and sanctified that we haven't questioned the will of God in our lives. But we must know he is at work. God is always at work. He is never deterred by our foolishness and mess. Nothing happens to us that's outside of God's control. There are no mistakes or surprises to God. God can do that thing even when we believe we can't. God can do it even when we don't believe. There are no mistakes. We know it is working for our good, not by looking at our own lives. We know by looking at God. Has God done anything for us before? Did God heal you? Did God feed you? Did God make a way out of no way? Did God heal your broken heart? Did God heal your children? Did he get you out of prison? Did he gift you out the bottle? Did he gift you out the corner? What has God done for you? We know it not by stuttering, studying patterns of our own lives. We must know it by following and studying the patterns of God. Finally, we have to remember that there are limitations to this particular verse. Every verse in the Bible is not for every single situation. People run around preaching and teaching and quoting scriptures they've never ever exegeted and don't have a clue of the historical or cultural context of that verse. Folk think themselves scholars and haven't seen the inside of a seminary or Bible school. This verse ain't for everybody. Sorry, y'all. Yes, I said ain't. That last phrase of this particular verse makes something crystal clear. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this verse is definitely not for you. The ending section of this verse says, those who love and are the called according to God's purpose. Who are the called? Who loves God? This verse is true of Christians. It's not a blanket promise to everyone in the human race. He gets really specific with this one right here, the called. Are you a part of the call? Have you responded to the call of Christ? Are you a part of God's saving purpose and plan? Have you accepted God's son as Jesus and Lord? If you have, this message is for you. If you have not, the altar call after the message is for you. And then and only then should you go back through a transcript of this sermon to understand the intricacies of which I speak. You have to know God to be able to get to a place where everything can work together for your good. 
If you fall apart with every hangnail, you might need to find God. If you can't make it through anything, you might need to find God. Salvation is crucial for you to be able to even grasp the concept of all things working together for good. You can't begin to look at anything being good and being a part of God's purpose if you don't know his son as Lord. It's a foreign fact to you. You must get to know God. The call of God and of Jesus Christ is for you to come out of darkness into this light. The call of God is to bring you from bondage into liberty. The call of God is to bring you from sin into grace. We have to be called of God to begin to believe that God can and know that God will. When you are called of God, you can assign no other reason to this level of grace and faith but God. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and the 11th verse sums this up so well for us. Jeremiah reminds us, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God already knows and God already cares. Who are we that God is mindful of us? We are the friends of God. We are children of the most high God. God is doing exactly what God does to get the glory out of our lives. Be still and see the glory of the Lord in this land of the living. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and see how God is going to work it out in your favor. Then and only then God work it out. Let us pray. God in Jesus name we thank you for this word. We thank you, God, that we know that even if right now we still have doubt in our hearts and minds, we know as we get closer to you, we will learn that you are working all things out for our good because we are the called according to your purpose. God, if there's anyone here today that does not know you in the pardoning of their sins. God, allow them to come today, not just to join a church, but to join your kingdom, God, through your son, Jesus the Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. If we could all stand in the presence of God. If there's anyone here today who does not know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, please come as the deacons and ministers take their place. If there's anyone here today that needs to understand how all things could work together for our good according to the purpose of God, please come today there's anyone here that needs a church home this is an awesome place to be rooted and grounded please come there's anyone here today that just wants to have a closer walk with our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ please come this isn't about you getting everything right before you come it's not about you being perfect before you come because God says just come.